What's happening, folks? Back with another reaction. Back with some more Bad Religion. And I've been going through their second studio album, the quite rare Into the Unknown, and it occurred to me as I was doing that that, you know what, I want to go back and react to a classic, rip-roaring, Bad Religion tune from my favorite period of the band, though again, I like all their albums right up into the present, including Age of Unreason. But yeah, I've mentioned it before, Suffer No Control Against the Grain, the first three albums they made after reforming in the late 80s, after a hiatus of a few years, are my absolute favorite, and maybe first among equals there is No Control, uh, 1989. And the tune we're going to listen to, which I thought I had already reacted to, but I looked it up, because um, you can keyword search your YouTube studio, uh, and I hadn't done it, and that is Sometimes I Feel Like, or Maybe Sometimes It Feels Like. In most places, including on Discogs, it's listed as Sometimes I Feel Like, and that's what it says on the back uh, sleeve, or CD case, as the case may be. But on the actual record here, or CD in this case, it says Sometimes It Feels Like, and that actually makes more sense, because that line is said twice in the song, while even though the self is relevant in the tune and is not immune to the concept being discussed, which we'll get to in a second, uh, the line, sometimes I feel like, is never actually said in the tune. So I think it should have been and was intended to be sometimes it feels like, and the fact that it's on some of the actual material in that form suggests to me that there was a miscommunication, but they, the initial print had it on the record sleeve as sometimes I feel like and the rest is history. So um, I've always wondered about that, but uh, it's just funny to have it saying that it's a different name here versus here. Regardless, uh, we're talking about, and you know, this tune is written by Mr. Brett. I've mentioned it before, I think Greg Graffin and Mr. Brett are like the, you know, Lennon-McCartney of the punk rock world, and I think the dynamic of them both writing songs on the same album is the real essence of what makes Bad Religion great, which is to say, I like the tunes or the albums in the 90s when Brett was away from the band, concentrating on the label Epitaph and so on, but um, when you get back to the process of belief and he rejoins, I think that's what it's all about. Um, so yeah, bottom line, this tune is written by Mr. Brett, and I feel like it's him really flexing his intellectual and terminological muscles. It's a, it's a punk rock poetry type of tune, and the, the prose used, uh, it's very, you know, highfalutin. It's, you know, they're, they're not, um, or they are $15 words in many cases. Uh, but I believe the concept that's gotten at in the tune is that for humans, and maybe even all biological life, which I say because there's a reference to a tiger behind a cage, or I don't know, maybe it's a lion, it's like a, a big cat of some kind, and the idea is that it has this unexpressed, pent-up sort of frustration and rage, and that is a concept explored in other examples, including, you know, saying, oh, here's this young kid, and, you know, he has... Um, a, uh, a small amount of understanding and ideas, but a large amount of emotion and feeling, and that leads to this unexpected frustration and this inability to articulate what you're feeling. And he says, you know, he's not immune to that because sometimes, you know, he ends up feeling like that and he's saying, oh, and, you know, you earn a nice wage and you have a nice house and, you know, a nice cookie-cutter life. Don't think you're immune to that. You will still find yourself with a surplus of emotions, but an inability to frame that or understand that or express that, and therefore you're, you'll feel this unfulfilled sensation. So I think the song gets at the discordant relationship between being a biological creature, in particular a sapient human being, in the modern world with all its um, trappings and limitations and so on, and ultimately the frail and mortal nature of being a biological creature in that um, matrix or environment. So yeah, I think it's a song that speaks to the inability of living things sometimes to make sense of or to articulate um, their place and their um, their experience in the world. So. Whenever I do Bad Religion re reactions, I talk for like five times longer than the tune, so I'm going to stop talking now. We'll just listen to the track. But this is Sometimes I Feel Like, or perhaps more appropriately, Sometimes It Feels Like, from the 1989 Bad Religion album, No Control. <laughs> Let's go. 
That's his own. No one else does the sit down. Again, you know, it's the nature of uh, uh, old school hardcore punk is, um, and again, this is later 80s, so, you know, this is after several years of hardcore um, being a thing, but ultimately, it's still very much a staple of, you know, you say what you're going to say, you do it quick, you do it hard, and you finish. You know, you don't linger, there's not, like, long instrumental sections, which is funny, because I'm going through an earlier album of theirs, Into the Unknown, where they explored some prog rock sounds and so on, and those do have a more you know, let's let this tune unfold over like four or five minutes. So um, it is interesting to me that, you know, they sort of like, nah, let's not do that. And, you know, they sort of, you know, Greg went off to grad school and they went off their different directions and they came back and it's like, we're going right back to that hardcore, you know, minute and a half, minute long tunes. Um, but yeah, again, it's just an example of why I think this album is maybe the best among the best. Um, it just, you know, there's not a weak tune on the album. And I say that also about Suffer and uh, Against the Green, but... As I said, um, not only do I think this one is maybe just, you know, superior because it really has so many great tunes, but it maybe has my favorite Bad Religion tune of all time, I Want to Conquer the World. Um, so, yeah, bottom line, uh, another great one from Greg, Brett, and the rest. Uh, shout out to them. Shout out to you. Shout out to Ryan. I, he asked uh, me to react to a track that, I guess it's on some versions of New Maps of Hell, but it's not on the version I have, because um, it's on a version that, like, CD plus DVD. So, um, yeah, bottom line, I'll look around, I'll see if I can find a way uh, to react to that. But in the meantime, uh, shout out to you, and, you know, I will continue to uh, take requests. Uh, so, yeah, let me know what you think of this one. I will see you next time, as the train is just celebrating bad religion, as well they should. <laughs>